Nadia she's senior market analyst at Equity Group. Good to have you with us, Nadia. Now, this interest rate cut was pretty much expected. How are markets reacting so far? So, uh, as you said, Taiba, uh, we've, we're seeing record highs for all the three major indices and Asian stocks are actually tracking Wall Street gains. I think markets are very cheerful after Trump's victory, especially that he's going to reduce tax cuts and this is really good for corporations. So, in general, it's good for um, a few of the sectors and we've, we're seeing also the Nasdaq tech stocks are also really uh, proving resilience. Um, so I think the only thing standing in the way of this bull run may be negative economic indicators. And we'll have more clarity in December because the November um, job labor market data was a bit uh, suspicious with the 12,000 uh, jobs that we saw. It was only due to the labor strikes and the hurricanes. So I think we'll know more. Uh, once we get more economic uh, data that will prove that the bull run or the bubble is yet to uh, stop. But also from another angle, rate cuts are supporting the bull run, Trump's victory, and um, a, like so far good economic data. So I think the only thing to stop this would be um, data that proves otherwise. Right, and Fed Chair Powell is currently under some pressure now that Trump is returning to office. Will that have any impact on any future decisions? Um, I think the Fed is acting as an independent uh, uh, policy, uh, basically, entity. Um, the, obviously, Trump will try to influence that, but I think as, uh, uh, as you screen that um, uh, power, he did, he did say he's not going to resign and he's going to defend the Fed's independence. So I think uh, definitely there's going to be uh, risks there, especially as Trump's agenda could hire, uh, hike uh, inflation or we see that inflation rates are rising and that will impact the Fed decisions and it will impact the easing policy, which also is reflecting a strong labor market, uh, reflecting strong stocks. So this momentum might change if we see a return of inflation. And I think this is the most thing investors are worried about right now with Trump uh, in the back in the White House. The tariffs and um, if he's going to actually impact inflation numbers, which uh, we, we do think that he will. And as you mentioned, Nadia, Asian equities are also tracking Wall Street gains. How is the region bracing for a second Trump term? So I think for China, it's a bit difficult. We already had uh, news that Taiwanese companies are going to relocate from China to the U.S. and to different parts of the world just so they they don't get to have the tariffs thing impact them. And I think it will impact them because it's 60 percent tariffs and going all the way to 100 percent. This will really harm um, corporations that operate in China or from China using uh, cheaper labor. So I think there will be a lot of reallocation in terms of where the operations are happening. And I think that's fine. It's, it's, uh, we're going to see a cyclical rotation of whether um, specific manufacturing uh, companies are operating in specific regions. But that's fine. So, uh, But Japan is also worried about its own um, Prime Minister, news, a new agenda, and if they're going to hike rates or not, because the yen is actually uh, weakening so much against the dollar amid a stronger dollar because of Trump's victory and is expected to continue for some time now, and the yen will continue to weaken unless the Bank of Japan intervenes. So I think there's a lot of things on their plate that they need to also handle. Okay, Nadia, we will come back to you in just a moment. Please do stay with us. Now, global commodity markets are in decline as traders assess the impact of Donald Trump's presidency. Brent crude futures fell 0.3% to $75.37 a barrel in early Friday trading, while U.S. West Texas intermediate futures added 0.5% to around $72 a barrel. But a strong dollar makes oil more expensive for holders of other currencies. The drop in prices is largely thanks to the weakening of Hurricane Rafael, which is moving away from U.S. oil fields. Downward pressure on oil prices also stems from a drop in demand, particularly from China. Beijing's crude imports fell 9% in October for the sixth consecutive month. And a rise in U.S. crude inventories added strain to the market. 
Meanwhile, gold prices have also fallen. Spot gold fell 0.4% to around $2,700 per ounce, while U.S. gold futures were flat. Other precious metals saw declines, with silver dropping 0.8%, platinum falling 0.2%, and palladium decreasing by 0.21%. Let's go back to Nadia now. Nadia, Trump's win saw gold uh, plunge and risk assets go up, but Wall Street see him as an inflationary president and expect market volatility. Does that mean we should expect gold to go up in the long term? So gold um, is already in a bull run. We've uh, managed to break uh, 2,785. The way to 2,800 would mean a weaker dollar. But with Trump's victory and presidency, he will support a stronger dollar despite his agenda calling for a weaker dollar so imp U.S. imports are cheaper and exports. Um, but gold right now, I think, continues to be under pressure, especially after the Fed uh, rate cut. We didn't see um, ultimately a very big push after the rate cut, not like the 50 basis point rate cut that we saw, the jumbo cut, that really throttled prices all the way to 2,700 and above. Um, there was a little bit of lack of momentum on gold, so I believe that it's going to be a little bit under pressure, and I think a 10 to, uh, uh, sorry, a 5 to 10 percent retracement to the downside was necessary for it to continue this bull run that has a new record highs. So I think. For a while, gold prices may be under pressure amid a stronger dollar. And uh, so far, there is the Trump trades, which um, support buying of the dollar, selling of gold, and buying of major indices like the S&P, the Nasdaq, and the Dow Jones. And let's look at oil now. If Trump is able to reach uh, regional stability in the Middle East, how, what would we see uh, with oil prices? So oil prices, um, ultimately, the main reason that they're under pressure right now and below $80 uh, a barrel is because of OPEC Plus decision to increase uh, production starting December, which they have delayed till next year. But that... Um, this uh, decision itself is really negatively impacting oil prices. Now, Trump, he wants oil to be cheaper for the U.S. citizen, so he's also going to keep prices down, despite him not being there for green energy and all that. He's a, a classic man uh, type of uh, investor. So he wants prices to be relatively below the $80 a barrel, which this also might cap gains in the future. And with OPEC Plus not cutting production anymore from some of its members, oil prices can be uh, uh, like affected in a really negative way, especially after we touch $64. For WTI, I think we can easily revisit and test these levels again unless uh, geopolitical tensions escalate again. But I think that oil prices will also continue to be under pressure. Okay, Nadia Albilasi, we will have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us as always. Thank you.